Good morning and welcome to the Episcopal Church of St. Mary the Virgin gathered virtually today for worship and celebration. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Today we are introducing a, a new experiment in our worship repertoire and we want to call it a simple sanctuary service. We have pre-recorded a service uh, based on the guidelines given to us by the city and the diocese for how we can offer worship uh, together from a sanctuary space. Uh, we have um, uh, not broken the rules, but the times where you see uh, Eric and Ellen singing and offering music, those were done separately from the other times where you see multiple people in the room at once. Uh, again, this is an experiment. We're looking forward to hearing your feedback uh, as we continue to explore ways that we can experience grace and love and worship together in Christ's holy name uh, in this season and in the days to come. Uh, Merry Christmas again, Happy New Year's, and thank you for joining us today. Peace. Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, 
You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. God be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together. A great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel. The Ephron is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd, a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young woman rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
first letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightening, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe? The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey. Then they started to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished, and his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. He said to them, Why are you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart, and Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. One of the things I look forward to most every year is going home, back to where my parents live. Now, interestingly, we've moved a lot, and so where that location is uh, has changed many times. But every year, for me to go home to where my mother and father are is a great joy, a great source of peace. Um, I love it because I'm there and I know that I'm loved, I'm welcome, I'm well fed. Uh, I relax. I let go of the cares and the worries that so often overcome me or, or swell within and without uh, my life. And it is a time for me to recharge, knowing that, that I'm fully loved, accepted, a place where I was always meant to be. Now, you know, I'm comfortable at, at friends' houses and, and, you know, like cousins' houses. There's play, many places where I am comfortable. But there's something about being home that is different. In our gospel today, we have Jesus uh, and his family going to Jerusalem for the, for the pilgrimage of the Passover, which was uh, a required aspect of, of Jewish life back then, to go to Jerusalem, where God lived, and in particular, to the temple. And when the festival was over, uh, families left. Now, don't be surprised by the fact that Jesus' family uh, kind of forgot where he was. This isn't a home alone uh, uh, metaphor equal. Back then, uh, dozens of family members and village members would travel together. They would set off and they would travel all day long, just assuming that everyone would be together. And at the end of the day, they would set up camp and they would begin to see where they were. So it is quite natural, kind of, that it is only at the end of the trip that they discover that Jesus is not with them. So they get anxious. They, of course, run back to find him, the boy. It's important to remember that at this point, uh, you know, in Judaism, you only become an adult at 13. So there is an expectation here that we understand that Jesus is still in his infancy, if you will. He is a child uh, in the eyes of God and in Judaism. So they return to Jerusalem, and they anxiously search for him, finding him only after a few days. And when they find him, they find him in the temple. 
with the teachers of the law, going back and forth in the ancient practice of Judaism of going through the scriptures in a conversational question mode. Uh, and those religious scholars are in awe of Jesus' capacity, uh, even while his parents are overcome with anxiety. And so mom and dad get frustrated with Jesus, just like we do as parents. And they, they accuse him of being mean, of being cruel, of treating him, treating him unfairly, about causing anxiety in their life. And what's important to understand about Jesus' response is that he's not being rude. He's not being flippant. Jesus is actually genuinely astonished, surprised, bewildered, that they would not naturally know that he'd gone home. And in this strange moment, we have this duality of Jesus that is such a blessing and such a mystery that he is at home, both in the world and in the very presence of God. And so in this moment, we have the two options that we are continually invited to. Worldly anxiousness or godly wonder. And when anxiety abounds in our life, well, Jesus invites us home. Home. The concept of home in Jewish theology and philosophy and history and livelihood is vitally important. But you see, home was a place. It was a land. It was a city. And in that city, it was a temple. And it was the, where the very presence of God was. And when the ancient Israelites were, were, were taken away in captivity, were overrun and scattered around the world at that time, when it was possible, the prophets, when it was capable, would call to them, Shuv, Shuv, which in biblical terms we, re, we um, interpret or we translate as the word repent. But in Jewish philosophy, again, Shuv meant Come home. Be at a place where you are loved. Know that that place is in the very presence of God. And this Christmas season that we celebrate as followers of Jesus is a double blessing. Because the, the God we worship as articulated and expressed in the life and birth and witness and blessing of Jesus Christ. We worship a God who not only calls us home, but comes to us and makes a home with us as well. This is the great message, blessing, and possibility of Christmas. That while we can always go home to God, God comes home with us. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. And now at this time, let us reaffirm our faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, 
and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church and the world. You come as a miracle, not breaking the laws of nature, but fulfilling them. God be with us, Emmanuel. You are the future towards which the Spirit draws us, the salvation offered to all humanity, the destiny prepared for us before the foundation of the world. God be with us, Emmanuel. You come as the humble perfection outside our grasp, yet graciously with our, within our reach. You are the wholeness that is to come, the wholeness that calls us into our fullest selves. God be with us, Emmanuel. You bind us together, all creation, the living to the dead. We now remember those whose petitions and thanksgivings which claim our hearts. We pray especially for the world and for uh, our own personal intentions and concerns and thanksgivings. I invite your prayers either silently or aloud. Most gracious God, open our hearts to your presence, that we may be transformed by the new birth of this holy season. These prayers and hopes we offer with joy and welcome you, God with us, loving creator, living world, and life-giving spirit. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of God's Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.